you are getting into concrete as a hobby and you're going shopping and you're going to pick up all the cool stuff that you're going to be working with and you're going to go to the concrete aisle obviously and you're going to scope it all out and there will be a ton of different stuff that you can get there but aside from the stuff in the concrete aisle what else should you be looking for You bought everything in the concrete aisle they're loading it into your dump truck right now but you're still there at the hardware store what else do you need i think something that you should get would be a broom now this is a pretty high quality horsehair broom made for giving you that broom texture on broom finished concrete they won't have that product probably just like that, but they'll have other brooms. And now that you've seen what it looks like, you can go and pick up, you know, a general purpose broom that you're going to dedicate to this function of being something that you can use for finishing concrete for various reasons. Take a look at this here, just to kind of get a feel for the, the texture of that. It's kind of a soft bristle, right? It's dense, there's a lot of them and it's relatively soft that's what you're looking for don't go for something with a really really stiff or coarse broom that's going to be too much for texturing concrete so what else do you need to get well very likely they don't locate the sponges and sea sponges in the concrete aisle but you should pick some some of those up so sponges and sea sponges are an invaluable tool that you can use you can use you know sea sponges are a little bit more specialty you can do rock texture with them that's a very interesting and unique thing that you can do with sea sponges and they're not very expensive to pick up a small pack of them so highly recommend you do a regular sponge get these by the dozen you're going to be going through them all the time whether for cleanup or for helping you with you know various concrete finishing applications you're going to be using a ton of sponges pick up some of those. So what else might you need while you're at this hardware store, but not from the concrete aisle? What about thin set? Thin set's not usually located in the concrete aisle. It's normally located in the tile section. And maybe you don't need thin set because it is commonly used for tile setting applications. But having a bag of thin set around might be useful for a lot of different reasons. If I were to summarize thin set, I would say it's the most heavily augmented uh, pre-blended mixture in terms of the admixtures that come in with it it's it's got so many bonding agents in it you could basically bond it to wood the wall your arm anything like that don't bond it to your arm but in theory you could probably do it because it really will stick to anything so you can use it as an intermediary between different concrete applications or you can use it for tile setting applications or maybe you have a unique application that you could use it for entirely but having a bag of that thin set sitting around might be just the ticket. It's not too expensive, it's not located in the concrete aisle, but I would recommend picking up something like that. Paint brushes. There are a ton of different reasons why you might suddenly need a paint brush, whether to you know, blend in some concrete, help you to mix a small amount of slurry. You'll probably go through a lot of them, have a number of the you know, fairly inexpensive ones around because you're probably not gonna get more than one use out of them for whatever you're using it for if it's a concrete application. Pieces of plywood, like you see here, like small pieces or buy one large piece and then you can pay to have them cut it up for you. You'll have to wait a little while while one of the workers comes and chops it up and you'll have to pay for a certain amount of the cuts, but ultimately it will be cost effective uh, versus buying the ones that they've pre-cut for you. Just buy a full sheet of plywood, half inch to three quarters inch in thickness, Chop it up into, you know, 24 inch by 24 inch sections is pretty convenient to have in terms of like concrete as a hobby because you can use this as like a, you know, small platform to work from, finish what you're working on and take it and move it to a new area, pull out a fresh piece of wood and you're ready to get started with your next project. Rolls of poly plastic, not located in the concrete aisle, but definitely something that you should have around because it helps you with cleanup and you can pour concrete onto it for a smooth finished texture. Uh, definitely something you want to have around if you're working with concrete as a hobby. If you are at the hardware store, something that's not in the concrete aisle that I want you to look at are the mist tints for paints. These are fantastic. Basically, every time I go to the hardware store, I go through the mist tint aisle. There'll be an aisle and it'll have all the ones they messed up that day or that week and they'll be stockpiled there. 
and they'll be vastly discounted because who wants whatever color that is? As it turns out, when you're talking about concrete applications, you can use almost all of those weird colors that other people don't want, so you can get them, you know, for pennies on the dollar, but they're only available when they're available, and, you know, usually it's pretty slim pickings, so you have to kind of go regularly. If you're going to the hardware store all the time, every time you go, just be in the habit of walking through that aisle looking for latex or acrylic mist tint paints that have been reduced for final sale, and you can use those whether painting concrete or mixing integral with the concrete, because, of course, latex or acrylic is something that's good. It's something that we use regularly for an admixture for concrete, enhancing various properties about it. So you can do the same thing with a latex or acrylic paint, and it also happens to add color. Okay, the last thing. The holy grail of things I want you to be looking for when you're not in the concrete aisle is white Portland cement. And you'd think it would be in the concrete aisle, and it probably would be if they were to carry this product. It's actually pretty difficult these days to get your hands on a bag of white Portland cement, but I suppose it's worth looking for and I suppose it's worth asking about because I have heard about them being located in different areas of the store, whether in the tiling section or in the seasonal or outdoor section. Sometimes they are, or perhaps the, the store that you're at can order this product in for you because if you can get a, your hands on white Portland cement by the bag, especially in some sort of regular supply, that would be fantastic because that's going to enable you to do a ton of more drastic stuff when it comes to artistic and, you know, creative applications like bright and bold colorations for concrete. Those all start with white Portland cement and it's hard to get your hands on. When you're working with decorative concrete or concrete as a hobby, not everything you need is going to be located in the concrete aisle. So I hope you found this list helpful and you can get your hands on some more useful items that you can use for your decorative concrete and crafting. Please be sure to like and subscribe.